Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth, and as you can see by the graphics, today I'm going to uh, be doing another video uh, in a series for Deadlands 2nd Edition. Uh, this is built on the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, which is what SWAD stands for. And uh, today I'll be focusing on Making Heroes, uh, which is Chapter 2. And without further ado, I am going to jump right into it. So, just so you know what I am talking about, you know, the, the books that you would need for this. This is the, this is the Adventures Edition of Savage Worlds. Awesome game system. I have plenty of videos on, uh, you know, on this system already on my channel. So uh, I will link this as part of the playlist so that you can check those out as well. But this is a setting, this is a setting book and a, a kind of like a theme book for it. So uh, it combines up all of the elements of some additional rules, additional <laughs> character types, <coughs> oh, excuse me, um, equipment and, um, and ties it all up into a setting piece. So uh, it kind of is a, a supplement of all supplements uh, for doing that. And that's really how the Savage World system works. You have your core rules and then you have the various settings that you can, uh, you can run your games in. So I'm going to actually spend most of the time, instead of just going to the PDF, I, I want to focus more so on uh, just so you can see the book and, and follow along. Uh, and, and let me know how that works out for you. So here is the Making Heroes section here. And it goes into uh, Western concepts. So let me just read off some of these Western concepts for you. So um, the Weird West is chock full of strange and interesting types. And your hero can be any kind of person you can imagine. So strap on your six guns and saddle up, amigo. It's time to create your salty gunslinger, mysterious huckster, or courageous scout. Making a character for Deadlands, the Weird West is similar to creating one for Stranger uh, for Savage Worlds game. The first step is choosing what kind of cowpoke you want to play. Pick one from the following list or devise your own concept. So we have the blessed, whether a pastor, non-rabbi, or a chosen slayer. Uh, these pious folks are humanity's most powerful weapons against the forces of darkness. You have a bounty hunter. Pretty self-explanatory what a bounty hunter is. You have the key master. With a steady influx of Asian immigrants over the past decades, various martial arts have become more common in North America. Some masters hone their key to a mystical degree, using it to invoke supernatural powers and phenomena. You have common folk. You have a deserter. He's seen his fair share of death and misery and won't be party to it anymore. Um, you have a drifter. Um, kind of like the uh, drifter that uh, Clint Eastwood often plays. Some folks make a living on odd jobs. More often than not, these odd jobs involve a smoking gun. Uh, you have an escort. Most often of the feminine persuasion, these soiled doves sometimes work single saloon and sometimes travel from town to town. An explorer, a grifter, a conman, play their dishonest trade to make a quick buck on the frontier snake oil salesman and, and, and whatnot, the huckster, these gamblers plumb Hoyle's book of games for arcane secrets encoded within. <coughs> you have an immigrant, whether Chinese or Mexican or European or African or whatever other immigrant group that you want to uh, have your character uh, representing. You have an Indian shaman. You have an Indian warrior. You have a law dog. Uh, basically a sheriff or, um, or U.S. Marshal or something along those lines. You have a mad scientist. You have a muckraker. Some folks believe in the reporting the truth, no matter who offends. Yellow journalism is their stock in trade. 
You have an outlaw. You have a prospector. You have a soldier. So there you have some, some of the, um, the backgrounds, if you will, or character types uh, for Deadlands. Race, humans are the only race allowed in Deadlands. Right? It's set in the real world, uh, even though it has some fictitious um, phenomena going about. Hindrances. So hindrances is a major uh, aspect of the Savage Worlds uh, system, where characters will have hindrances, they will have edges, they will have advantages and disadvantages attached to their character, usually by choice, but sometimes they are uh, caused by various, um, by various uh, aspects of character creation. Now we get to pages 14 and 15 here, where we actually get into the, um, the attributes, and it, it follows the same system that um, Savage Worlds uses, right? A character begins with free D4s in each of his five attributes, agility, smart, spirit, strength, and vigor. You have five points to distribute among these attributes, raising an attribute by a die. Type costs one point, and you may not raise an attribute above D12. You may spend two hindrance points to raise one attribute by one die. What they mean by one die is, if you want to go from the base D4 for a particular attribute, you spend one point and you will now be a D6. You spend two points, you'll now be a D8 and so on and so forth to a maximum of D12 at the start of character creation. <coughs> skills. Buying skills. Next you have 12 points to buy skills. Most standard skills in Savage World rulebook are available in Deadlands and the Weird West. Raising a skill by one die costs one point, starting at D4. So again, very, very similar system as attributes. It costs two points per die type to raise a skill above its linked attribute. So let's say you have an attribute of a D6, but you want to raise a, an appropriate skill to a D8. It will cost you two extra points to go beyond the D6 to the D8. So you have various types of skills, such as knowledge skills, uh, trade sports, language. You have derived statistics of pace, parry, and toughness. <coughs> Edges are special abilities your hero uh, has uh, that are above and beyond what other folk in the world might also have. So this is what really makes the player character different from the standard human being that they're going to encounter. Then you will determine your gear, your background details, and then your worst nightmare. Your worst nightmare is finally think a bit about what really scares your hero. What's he afraid of and why? Now think about what kind of dream makes him wake up with the cold sweats at night. Write this down, no reason really, just trust us. So um, adding a little bit more flavor to your character by giving them, it's almost like having them have a, a different motivation, right? So you should always create your characters with some kind of a, a goal or motivation in mind. Uh, and then I, I really like the fact that they're telling you to create a nightmare that the character has that might come into use uh, by either the game master or yourself as a character uh, as well. Hindrances, and so there is a, a list of hindrances here. Uh, hindrances sometimes, as you can see, I'll look at uh, ailing, right? So ailing uh, is uh, medicine, is a rudimentary science on the frontier, and there are worse ways to die than a severe case of lead poisoning. So Allen is uh, minor or major. So many of these uh, hindrances may have uh, two different variations of it, whether it be minor, which means it's a, a minor hindrance or a major hindrance. All right, and um, 
So we have Cursed, that's a major. We have Grim Servant of Death, which is a major. Um, Heavy Sleeping is minor. Lion Eyes is minor. Night Terrors is major, uh, which everyone starts with a nightmare. So let's see. To say your hombre has bad dreams is a severe understatement. The land of Nod is a constant nightmare. He tosses and turns like a demon on the rack and likely keeps everyone within earshot of him awake. With this nightly torment, the repeated barrage of his psyche results in an overall weakened resolve. He suffers minus one penalty to all spirit rolls. Yeah, so that's a pretty major effect of a hindrance. And we have the Old Ways Oath. We have Talisman. We have Tenderfoot, which is a major. Um, you know, a Tenderfoot is somebody who is not used to the wilderness kind of thing. Uh, very, very new to the frontier, let's say. Uh, trouble Magnet, you either attract a minor amount of trouble or a major amount of trouble. There are new edges. So edges are advantages. Background edges are arcane uh, background, so you're blessed. Arcane background for chi master, uh, key master, sorry. Um, arcane background for uh, hucksters, for mad scientists, for shaman. Gallows humor, uh, it requires novice and taunt, D6+. Um, so some people make jokes about the dire situations. Uh, so this will give you a plus one to support for all allies making the same fear checks. All right, so you can grant a boon for them to um, have an easier time uh, getting there. So it's kind of like dark humor, right? And it kind of breaks the ice, it breaks the edge, and... Um, allows everybody to remain motivated and move forward. Um, veteran of the Weird, Weird West. You have combat edges. Don't let them get, uh, don't let them get riled. Duelist, fan the hammer. Fanning the hammer is the, you know, with a, a single action revolver when you slam the hammer back uh, very rapidly and you can shoot as long as you have the trigger pulled, uh, shoot as fast as you can do that. Quick draw. Professional edges, you have agent, you have born in the saddle, you have card sharp, you have guts, scout, soldier, tale teller, territorial ranger, and reputation. And then finally, weird edges. Um, actually, we have several others, but you have grit, harrowed, knack. Legendary edges, you have Behold a pale horse, you have damned, you have fast as lightning, you have right hand of the devil, you have true grit, and there you have it. So you can see that there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of additional, uh, additional hindrances, additional edges, additional background skills, and whatnot, all building off of and again when you're creating a character you can pull from here as well um but these are just going to give you uh the real setting uh feel in creating your character uh with uh with deadlands so i will switch views here so once again i mean it i'm really excited to uh, start playing this i am planning on running some kind of a Deadlands adventure, most likely one that I've written myself, um, not, but not until perhaps April of 2025. So I'm, I'm contemplating running my very first Deadlands game uh, at a convention in uh, April of 2025 at uh, Rising Phoenix Games Convention in uh, Massachusetts. So um, looking forward to that. I've already spoken to uh, at least one other creator of uh, adventures for the Savage Worlds, uh, you know, Peter Shalom, who has been on my channel already. So um, I will certainly look forward to seeing him at that convention and, and chatting with him. And we'll, we'll talk in between as well uh, leading up to that because, uh, I mean, he had mentioned, you know, possibly 
co-GMing a, uh, a game session, which would be really, really interesting. That's not something I've done. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I've done co-teaching, you know, as a, as a retired teacher, I did co-teaching plenty of times, but to do a, a co-GMing would be really interesting uh, experience to do. I'm not quite sure I want to do it at a convention setting, but I will trust him uh, if, uh, if he thinks that we can pull it off and, uh, you know, and give it a great try. So anyway, um, this of course was a response. Uh, someone had mentioned in the comment section, uh, uh, one of yesterday's videos, Hey, can you get back to doing Deadlands? And so here you go. Uh, I always try to, uh, please my subscribers and, and give them the content that they're, they're looking for. And it's been a couple weeks since I've done Deadlands. So, uh, I'm happy to, uh, Happy to put this one up on a, on a weekend, which I normally don't do videos on weekends, but lately I have been. I've been trying to squeeze some in there as well. So the next installment of Deadlands, uh, just to give you a heads up, um, I'm not going to deal too much in with gear and goods. I typically don't when I do these walkthroughs and, and talk about and first looks and such, but, uh, you know, I might look into uh the next set might be life in the weird uh in the weird west and talk a little bit about that getting that kind of setting um tone uh correct or um i will definitely do a video on setting rules so um rules for guns dueling uh hanging and stampede so i'll definitely do that uh as a separate video as well so We'll see. It might be Life in the Weird West will be the next video in this series. And so you can look forward to seeing that. Uh, remember to subscribe and hit the alert button so that you know when a new video has been uploaded on the channel. Um, please feel free to comment. Uh, as you can see, I respond to my comments either uh, directly with a comment back or uh, with action. You know, when you ask me to look at something and if I do have it, I will certainly get on to it as soon as I can. So, um, as always, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a convention sometime soon. You'll have a great rest of your day. Take care.